by closing up the big 50 by 50 doors on either end, we'll be down to two grams of air left. What that means, we remove about 99.9999999% of the air out of this chamber. We do that using about 5,000 horsepower worth of mechanical vacuum pumps in the back room until we get down to almost all of the air is gone. And then we open up 10 pumps that are in the floor right behind you there. And those pumps evacuate the rest of the air by freezing the air out that's left. The interior of those pumps actually operate at minus 430 degrees below zero, so cold that the air literally turns to ice and that removes it from this large thermal vacuum chamber. Now it's not just a vacuum chamber, we don't just remove the air, but we can also thermally condition the spacecraft. We use that using these big metal panels that you see hanging around you and above you. We can pump cold gas nitrogen through those to simulate the cold of outer space. We can run temperatures down to about minus 270 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. But we can also warm the gas so that we can simulate when the spacecraft is in sunlight up to about plus 170 degrees above zero Fahrenheit. This chamber, next year at about this time, hopefully, we'll see how the schedule holds, we'll have EM1 inside this chamber doing thermal vacuum testing. Okay, so why thermal vacuum, right? We're on Earth. We are designing, building, and testing in an environment that's going to be very different from the actual application. And in the absence of oxygen and at these pressures, sometimes valves, switches. Um, we don't do active firing here, but you will see that done at the V2 facility. Sometimes these components of subsystems don't work the way we thought they would work. And this is the place to do your trial run before you actually use the components in a mission. And another important thing is we do have the plus minus temperature range and the delta temperatures have a lot of impact on many of our subsystems and even the materials that we're flying now. And this is a very good opportunity to learn about all of that before we actually um, send it into space. Very much um, all of these facilities are huge risk reduction activities for our agency. Again, trying to build up um, our confidence spacecraft that we're building and flying so that we can meet our objectives. When you do testing, the size of this chamber allows you to do it in the configuration you're going to be on in orbit. Right. So in a lot of chambers that are smaller, relatively speaking, you simulate the solar array being uh, just a, a dummy load. In, in this chamber, you can deploy the solar array and test it that way. So you actually test, there's a phrase, test like you fly. That's like you fly in here gives you a whole different uh, appreciation for it. So that's why the scale of this helps so much. And you'll see why scale matters next when you see our test start right now. Yeah, so it is an interesting work. And in fact, we did uh, airbags or oh, so Mars opportunity uh, pressure on the city of Mars. So we just to be just like Mars conditions. How different is it? Pardon? How different is it from Mars? How different is it? It's um, just a couple percent of the normal atmospheric pressure. So we use measurement in vacuum called TOR. Roughly in this room right now, it's about 764, 740 TOR, or about 29 and a half inches of mercury column. If you listen to the weather, right, that's about 14 and a half PSIA. On the surface of Mars, it's about three to four TOR. And that's uh, probably about 0.4 PSIA. Per square inch, so, or maybe just a smidge yes, lower than that. 